uh, about 2.30 or maybe a little bit before, apparently Joe and Lai appeared at the guest house unannounced, got a hold of Henry and said that uh, Chairman Mao would like to uh, see the president if he would come over. Henry rushed upstairs, uh, told the president, he slapped on his coat, two of them went out, grabbed Bob Taylor on the way, and uh, took off for uh, Mao's residence, unbeknownst to anybody else. Taylor came into the Chapin's schedule planning meeting and said that this is what they were going to do. He was very concerned about it, uh, but that he was under orders to tell no one, and that they were not to tell Ziegler make any public thing out of it until they got back. So Dwight came right down and told me. We debated how to handle the thing for a while, called Ziegler and had him come over, and I told him. Ron was holding a tangerine in his hand, took a bite of it, getting about half the tangerine in one bite, peeling it off. He was, to say the least, a little startled. We spent uh, a very long hour and a half trying to figure out what the uh, various contingencies were since we had no idea when they'd be back or what would happen in the meantime. Since we couldn't announce any of this, uh, we didn't exactly know how to handle it. We debated it back and forth as to what to do. Also speculated on all the uh, wild range of possibilities that you have when you're sitting in a, a Chinese guest house with Red Army troops uh, guarding you outside. And you kind of wonder, is the president's taken off alone with no staff, no security, except one agent, no doctor, etc. But uh, the worries generally turned out to be uh, unfounded since the president returned shortly after four. Anyway, uh, the president called me up, told me he'd been over to see now. Obviously, he was very impressed with the whole thing, but didn't get into any details at that time. President Nixon's visit to our country at the invitation of the Chinese government provides the leaders of the two countries with an opportunity of meeting in person to seek the normalization of relations between the two countries and also to exchange views on questions of concern to the two sides. This is a positive move in conformity with the desire of the Chinese and American peoples and an event unprecedented in the history of the relations between China and the United States. The American people are a great people. The Chinese people are a great people. The peoples of our two countries have always been friendly to each other. But owing to reasons known to all, contacts between the two peoples were suspended for over 20 years. Now, through the common efforts of China and the United States, the gate to friendly contacts has finally been opened. In conclusion, I propose a toast to the health of President Nixon and Mrs. Nixon, to the health of our other American guests, to the health of all our friends and comrades present, and to the friendship between the Chinese and American peoples.
상호아, 신년이 참 바다란 거를 치고. 바다 보나, 신년이야. Many lives, of course, were lost in building it because there was no machinery or equipment at the time. It had to all be done by hand. Uh, but uh, under the circumstances, it uh, is a certainly symbol of what China in the past has been and what China in the future can become. A people that could build a wall like this uh, certainly uh, have a great past to be proud of and a people who have this kind of a past uh, must also have a great future. Uh, my hope is that in the future, perhaps as a result of uh, the beginning that we have made on this journey, that many, many Americans, particularly the young Americans who like to travel so much, will have an opportunity to come here as I have come here today with Mrs. Nixon and the others in our party. That they will be able to see this wall. Uh, that they will think back as I think back to the history of this great people. Uh, and that they will have an opportunity as we have had an opportunity to know the Chinese people and know them better. Uh, and uh, I think one of the results of our trip, we hope, may be that uh, the walls that are erected uh, whether they are physical walls like this or whether they are other walls of ideology or philosophy, uh, will not divide peoples in the world. Uh, that peoples, regardless of their differences in backgrounds and their philosophies, will have an opportunity to communicate with each, with each other, to know each other, uh, and to share with each other uh, those particular endeavors that will mean peaceful progress in the years ahead. So, all in all, I would say finally, I, we've come a long way to be here today, 16,000 miles. And uh, many things that have occurred in this trip uh, have made me realize that uh, it was worth coming. But I would say, as I look at the wall, it's worth coming 16,000 miles just to stand here and see the wall. You agree, Mr. Secretary? I certainly do, Mr. President. It really is a tremendous privilege that we've all had to be here today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you get a little rest today? No? One, hour. One hour. Me too. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the beautiful feathers that you have is especially pretty. <laughs> 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 Mr. Prime Minister, Chairman Zhang, 
and our Chinese and American friends. This magnificent banquet marks the end of our stay in the People's Republic of China. We have been here a week. This was the week that changed the world. As we look back over this week, we think of the boundless hospitality that has been extended to all of us by our Chinese friends. We have today seen the progress of modern China. We have seen the matchless wonders of ancient China. We have seen also the beauty of the countryside, the vibrancy of a great city, Shanghai. All this we enjoyed enormously. But most important was the fact that we had the opportunity to have talks with Chairman Mao, with Prime Minister Joan Lai, with the Foreign Minister and other people in the government. The joint communique which we have issued today summarizes the results of our talks. But what we have said in that communique is not nearly as important as what we will do in the years ahead to build a bridge across 16,000 miles and 22 years of hostility which have divided us in the past. And what we have said today is that we shall build that bridge. With Chairman Mao, with the Prime Minister, and with others with whom we have met, our talks have been characterized by frankness, by honesty, by determination, and above all, by mutual respect. Our communique indicates, as it should, some areas of difference. It also indicates some areas of agreement. To mention only one that is particularly appropriate here in Shanghai is the fact that this great city over the past has on many occasions been the victim of foreign aggression and foreign occupation. And we join the Chinese people, we the American people, in our dedication to this principle that never again shall foreign domination foreign occupation be visited upon this city or any part of China or any independent country in this world. Mr. Prime Minister, our two peoples tonight hold the future of the world in our hands. And as we think of that future, we are dedicated to the principle that we can build a new world, a world of peace, a world of justice, a world of independence for all nations. And if we succeed in working together where we can find common ground, if we can find the common ground on which we can both stand, where we can build the bridge between us and build a new world, generations in the years ahead will look back and thank us for this meeting that we have held in this past week. And let the great Chinese people and the great American people be worthy of the hopes and ideals of the world for peace and justice and progress for all. Yeah. 
Well, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, Maggie. So, President, do you have any comments from the folks back home? It's already has been stated in the communique, hasn't it? I don't have anything more to add to that communique. <laughs> The premier can get some rest now. Now we can go to the 